Greetings, my brothers and sisters. We thank you for tuning in with us today here at Reynolds Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, where everybody is somebody but Jesus is Lord. We pray that something will be said or done on today that just might encourage you and give you even more hope because we lived in a trying time. This is, we are in some difficult times, but be encouraged and know that God is with you. Our sermon topic for today is you can't go forward while looking back. You can't go forward while looking back. And our supporting text comes from the book of Genesis, the 19th chapter, the 15th through the 17th verse. And the word of God reads as thus. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid, hand, laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So here the angel of the Lord was telling Lot and his, to get out of that area, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah, because the Lord was going to destroy that land. And he told them, once you leave, he gave them explicit instructions. Do not look back. God never steers or stops a car. He only steers when it's in motion, church. He only steers. He only tries to lead you when you're capable and you are open-minded and ready to receive what he has for you. You have to be all in it, church. Don't look back. You should be fully engaged with God through Christ Jesus. Has it ever occurred to you that the older you get, the faster time seems to pass by? As years go by, some of us have deep regrets about our past. Some say, I wish I would have done things differently. If I had the chance, if I could live my life all over, I would do things differently. Things, church, whether you know it or not, weren't mean, meant to be made done differently. Our lives are predestined by Christ Jesus. Some of us are even bargaining with God. Some of our services to God have been spotty at best because of our selfish motives. Some, like David, are in a position where our sins are over our head. We've in it over our head. And we think that God is not going to look upon us favorably as a result of our sins. But if you know the word of God, he said that when you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, and all you have to do is go to him and ask for forgiveness. Repent of your sins, turn from your wicked ways, and go forward. God has allowed them to live to see another year, some people, or years, and they still are regretting things. Some are saying that last year was filled with headaches and sicknesses and maybe even death. There were constant trials and tribulations. It was rough for them, so some of them are ready to throw in the towel. We need to take an attitude of Paul, where Paul in Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. What Paul was saying here is that I'm not saying I've got it all together. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Paul said, I'm not even saying that I've arrived, but I'm well on my way. I now am walking with the Lord. Paul said the Lord got his attention. Paul says, I'm reaching out for Christ, who has, real, has reached out for me, even when he, he wasn't on my mind. Paul is saying, even when, when, when he wasn't even thinking about Christ, 
Christ was thinking about him, and the same applies to us, church. Even when we're not thinking about Christ, even though when we don't think about it, we need to take time and pray or time to read the Bible, God knows our every thought, church. He knows every hair on your head. Paul says, don't get me wrong. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. Paul says, I've done some jacked up things in my life. I've hurt a lot of people. I've lied. I've stole. I've chilled. I've, I've, I've lied, I've stole, and I've, I, I'm still doing things that are wrong. But when I do things wrong, I know to go back to God and ask for forgiveness. Paul says, I've hurt people that were very close to me. But Paul says, now that Christ has knocked me off that throne or knocked me off that beast, he said, now I can see things more clearly now. And he said, as a result, I'm going forward in Jesus he said, I got my eyes on my goal, where God is beckoning us to, unload, uh, to move onward, church, and not backwards. We need to be onward for Christ Jesus today. Paul is saying, I'm off and running, and I won't turn back. So let us keep focused on our goals, church. Even when your vision seems blurred and it seems like you can't see because of cataracts on your eyes or whatever, the, 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 the earth or, or the atmosphere becomes foggy and you can't see clearly. Some people say you can't see the forest for the trees. You will still, if you back down and humble yourself and listen to Christ Jesus and hear what he has to say to you, then you can see what he has for you. Let us not dwell on the past and how things don't go the way that you wanted to go. Or maybe you feel like you failed in life or you, do, or you didn't reach your intended goal. Don't wail over it, church. Don't wail and bellyache over it. Don't wail and bellyache over wasted opportunities in life. God grants us new mercies every day, church. You cannot fix the past. You can't change the past. It is what it is. All you can do is rejoice in the new opportunities that are before you. The thing about the past is that you probably don't remember all the things you messed up anyway. Our minds are deceitful, and we may even cover up some things or conveniently forget some things. As we age, we just flat out forget some things because that's how the mind is. And it, your trespasses and all of your sins are forgiven by Christ Jesus. We all know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah when God had become angry at, that, at the action of his created people. This was a city characterized or labeled as sin city. Their actions angered God to the point that he destroyed the very grounds of it. God sent his angels or messengers to inform Lot of the destruction on the horizon. God was merciful to Lot and his family because of his uncle Abraham's prayers that were sent up before them. Even after being told by God's messenger to leave the city, or they too would be destroyed along with all the other heathens, God specifically told them to leave and do not look back. God is saying to us today, leave the world of sin, leave that type of life, and come on over here to my side. And once you come over to my side, don't look back. The Bible said Lot's wife looked back. She looked back at the smoldering city, clinging to her past. And just like some of us, she was unwilling to completely turn away from her past. I asked the question today, are you looking back and longingly at the sin while trying to move forward with God? I tell you, church, it's impossible to do. You can't make progress with God while clinging to your past, church. Jesus said it best in the book of Matthew when he said, no one can serve two masters. You can't serve sin and God too, church. You got to make up your mind that you're going all the way for Jesus and that you're not going to look back. Some helpful scriptures today are one comes from Luke 9 and 62, where it says that no man looking back is fit for the kingdom or no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Luke 9, 59 and 61 says, And another said, Lord, suffer me to first be to go bury my father. Jesus replied to him, Let the dead bury the, bed, the dead. Go preach to the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
For behold, all things are passed away, and all things are now become new. Isaiah 43 and 18 says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old, church. Genesis 19 and 17, we, we, we read that earlier. Lot, told, Lot was told to leave the city and, didn't look, and don't look back. Hasten to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. In 2 Peter 2, 21 and 22, it says, Better not to know the way than to know it and to turn back, church. I'm going to leave you today with some helpful thoughts or things for food for thought for you today. Words of encouragement. God is here, church. God is standing by. No matter what is going on in our lives, God is standing back and he's telling you, go forward, go forward, don't look back. Only thing that's behind you is your past and let your past pass, church, and move forward. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you today to remember this. You can't change what has already happened. So choose to look ahead instead of behind you. Looking back gives you regrets, church. Looking ahead gives you opportunities, though. You can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. The only time you should ever look back is to see just how far Christ has brought you. Don't stumble over something that's behind you, church. Look forward with hope, not backwards with regret. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending, church. And remember, prayer and spiritual growth. Remember to pray. Remember to pray. The Bible says we ought to always pray and not faint. Pray for spiritual growth, and it's easier to put the past behind you when you're in God and when you're praying with God and walking with God. The songwriter says, and I say to you today, this is what's coming from my heart, and I feel this way. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Though none go with me, with me still I will follow Jesus, and there's no turning back. The cross before me, church, the world behind me, there's still no turning back. For God is able to deliver us from the snares of the enemy. I say to you, God's blessings upon you. God keep you. We've been through a lot. We're going to go through a lot. But do not look back. Go forward so that you don't turn into a pillow of salt. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. Lord, right now, if I had 10 million tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God that delivered his people out of the hands of Pharaoh, is delivering us today. Lord, a lot of prayers have gone up, but thanks be to God, you heard our cries, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray right now for mankind everywhere, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that all of this division, O oh God, and all of this hatred and rioting, O oh God, will cease in its tracks, Heavenly Father. Teach us, O oh God, to love one another, O oh God, and not to hate. Lord, we're better than this. We're better than this, O oh Heavenly Father. But God, we know that you know all and you see all, and that you're going to lead us, Heavenly Father, to victory right now. Lord, we just thank you for this past week, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for what's about to manifest itself, what is actually manifesting itself right now, O oh God, and its deliverance, O oh God. We are not going to turn back, O oh Heavenly Father. No matter what man throws at us, no matter what Satan throws at our feet, O oh God, it can turn into a serpent all it wants to. But, O oh God, we know that you can turn that serpent right back into a rod again. Heavenly Father, we pray right now for the loss, for the, lo for the family that lost uh, Deacon Lemmy Harrison on this past week, Lord. We funeralized him on this past week. We pray, oh God, for the bereaved everywhere. Heavenly Father, we thank for this church. We thank you for our membership, Lord. We have some awesome members here at Reynolds Chapel. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the pastors, the preachers, and the evangelists, Lord, and the apostles, all of your leaders out there all over the world, Lord. We pray for every one of them, oh God. Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Lord, whatever we do, we continue to go forward, Lord, and not look back. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and ask these blessings. Amen and amen again. <laughs>